Welcome back to another instalment of New Zealand's Bird of the Week, where in this video I will be talking about the New Zealand's little bison, scarcely known herons that have unfortunately become extinct. I hope you enjoy. New Zealand little bisons were small herons that possessed a brown and yellow bill, yellowish green facial skin and green legs, as well as having buff, chestnuts, and reddish brown plumage, being around 37 centimeters long when fully grown and about 250 grams in weight. The females were also unique in terms of their coloration, as they appear to have had similar plumage to the males, which is unusual in small bisons. In terms of their taxonomy, they have occasionally been referred to as a subspecies of little bison, or conspecific with the blackback bison of Australia and Old Guinea, although they are now recognised due to size and plumage differences. They were also once widespread in the country, with subfossil bones being found widely in the North and South Islands, as well as on the Chathams. From the few behavioural accounts known from them, they were quite shy around people, as would be expected for bisons. Walter Buller, the well-known New Zealand ornithologist who has been present for many of these videos, quoted a man known as Mr Doherty, who was familiar with the birds in Westland. Quote, they are to be found on the saltwater lagoons on the seashore, always hugging the timbered side of the same. I have seen them in two positions standing on the bank of the lagoon, with their heads bent forward, studiously watching the water. At other times I have seen them standing straight up, almost perpendicular. I should say this is the proper position for the bird to be placed in when stuffed. When speaking of lagoons as the places where they are to be found, I may mention that I caught one about two miles in the bush on the bank of a creek, but the creek led to a lagoon. They live on small fishes or the roots of reeds. I should say the latter because at the very place where I caught one I observed the reeds turned up and the roots gone. They are very solitary and are always found alone and they stand for hours in one place. I heard a person say that he had opened one and found a large egg in it. They breed on the ground in very obscure places, I have never heard their cry. End quote. They were also noted to freeze when spooked, and doing their best to blend in with their surroundings by standing bolt upright. Some were also kept in captivity and ate mudfish and worms, although they were fussy, and would only take food when served in water, with it being suspected that the majority of their diets was made up of galaxid fishes. They didn't do too well overall in these enclosed areas, especially when kept with other birds. While as noted earlier that they were not known to call, they were noted to do so in captivity, with one bird showing alarm at a cat, giving a peculiar snapping cry, and when harassed, utters a cry not unlike that of a kingfisher, but not as loud. In recent times, the birds were only known with certainty to be surviving in the South Island, with most records and specimens coming from Westland. Their scarcity was likely due to the early spread of Norway rats and feral cats when Europeans first arrived. Therefore, never being all that common, their demise coincides well with the first wave of Stoes invasion on the west coast, with the last definite records coming from the mid-1890s. And with that, I thank you for watching this instalment of New Zealand's Bird of the Week. For next time, you are now able to vote for the Antipodean albatross, birds which vary in colour from black and white through to chocolate brown, breeding almost exclusively on the Auckland and Antipodes Islands. With that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.